this is uh, what I hope will be a fairly short video. What you see on the left is a new uh, piece of equipment or toy, however you want to regard it. Actually, since I'm retired and just doing this as a hobby, I guess everything's a toy. It's a hand tech. Uh, handheld oscilloscope. I think it's called the 2C42. At any rate, it's the one that does not have the arbitrary waveform generator. And I bought this to replace a handheld oscilloscope that I've had for a very, very long time. And the reason I bought it is I find handheld oscilloscopes to be especially helpful when you need the the floating ground. In other words, when you're trying to measure a signal where the reference is not tied to the earth ground, the, the so-called green wire in your electrical system. Almost all lab oscilloscopes are, uh, or desktop or whatever you want to call them, have the uh, the negative of the their BNC inputs all tied to the ground or to the green wire. So what do you see on the screen? Well, uh, at the bottom is the output from this Handtech current probe that you see right here. And above it on the screen is a signal coming from this buck converter. Now, I'll talk a little more about this buck converter in a minute, but what I mainly wanted to show you is this buck converter right now is putting out, uh, let's see, if maybe turn this off. May show up better. Well, five volts at uh, Oh, 0.45 amps. Let me turn this back on, see if that, yeah, that actually helps it. Okay, so the, uh, the buck converter is a, uh, one of these small, uh, <laughs> cheap, it costs about a buck if you buy them in quantity of uh, six or eight at a time. And what you see connected, I've hooked a wire to the, uh, to the coil of the buck converter so that I can look at the voltage on the coil. And that's where you see all those probes connected together. And then over here you see the mixing differential probe which I'll show you in a minute, is connected to the Rigol oscilloscope. But let's come back to the Instec. And what I want to do is show you this. Watch the top trace as I lower the load. Notice how it gets flat in that area. And that is when this buck converter is running in discontinuous current mode. Now as I raise the load, eventually it becomes continuous current mode. And the, uh, <laughs> the timeout on the scope keeps, uh, keeps resetting to save my battery. But the, uh, the whole idea of buying this Handtech oscilloscope was to do these sorts of measurements. Now, uh, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll show you the, the schematic and everything of this buck converter. But for now, I mainly wanted to uh, point out that if you're looking for a relatively inexpensive, this, uh, this scope cost me less than $100. And it's pretty neat. It's a two-channel. I'm not going to do a review on it. There's been a number of those already on YouTube. But one channel is connected to the current probe, and one channel is connected to the regular by 10 oscilloscope probe. 
and uh, I hope you can tell from this that this little hand tech can be quite handy in working on or uh, analyzing circuits like that uh, buck converter. So first let me talk about the oscilloscope that I used to use for this. Uh, very, very out of date. And, uh, and then a little bit about that buck converter. I forgot before I go there. I did want to show you the waveforms on the Rigol. just a little bit here. And there what you see is uh, the, let's see, I think this is the current waveform, or the, I'm sorry, the voltage waveform on the uh, uh, on the inductor of the uh, buck converter. Uh, this is the, uh, I'm sorry, this is the differential probe and this is the mixing current probe that you see down there next to the hand tech. So the hand tech is measuring the current uh, on the hand tech scope and the mixing, the uh, the one on the far side is measuring the current for the for the Rigol. So on the Rigol, we have three channels displayed. Uh, they are the inductor voltage, the uh, 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 let's see what what are we working at here? Uh, well, one of these is the differential probe, and the other one is just a regular oscilloscope probe. Uh, hooked to the same point. The reason that I point that out is you notice that the current probe uh, is displaying the current coming from the power supply and then this is showing the voltage on the inductor and of course they are basically the same uh, because it's when the inductor is being charged that the uh, uh, power supply current is being drawn. Like I say, I'll talk just a little bit more about this buck converter here in a minute. Here is the scope that I used to use. It, it's a, a Velman HPS 40 and you see it there in, in its box. It's been a very nice scope. Uh, and just like the hand tech, it also has uh, multimeter functions and uh, and so on. But some of the drawbacks are, uh, for one thing, I think this is only 10 megahertz, or anyway, it's considerably lower bandwidth than the hand tech. Uh, well, I'm not going to bother. You can, uh, it's in the manual. The the point is, it's lower bandwidth, uh, and it only has one channel, so. You can't compare waveforms like you can on the hand tech. Let me re display this. Here you see you can get two waveforms, which can be very useful when you're working on things like these uh, buck converters or switch mode power supplies or anything else. Now, obviously four channels would be better. Uh, I mean, there's always something better. But for less than a hundred dollars, this I think is a really nice value. And so let's take a look at the buck converter that we're, that we're measuring and uh, then close this video out. Here is the uh, buck converter that we're, we're working with. Uh, it's based on an LM2596 and basically it's a DC to DC converter. Uh, the input uh, I think can go from 4 to 40 volts and the output can go from uh, 
a little over uh, right around in, uh, one and a quarter volts uh, up to 35 volts DC. So here is the schematic. Zero in a little more on that. And what we are looking at, the uh, obviously we were looking at the current in here, but then we were also looking at the voltage on this coil. And of course the way the buck converter works is the uh, uh, controller chip or the, the MOSFET if you're, if you're doing it with uh, discrete components charges up the inductor. That is, it puts current through the inductor to create a magnetic field. Then it disconnects and that magnetic field collapses and the current flows through this uh, diode called a freewheeling diode. The combination of the current flowing through the inductor to charge it and the freewheeling current charge up this capacitor to a voltage which is below the input voltage, but the current you can draw from the output can be uh, more than you're supplying to the input. So the idea is you supply a certain amount of power on this side, a voltage and a current. On this side you get a lower voltage and a higher current. And that's basically the principle of a uh, buck converter. Now we've talked a little bit about buck converters in some of the uh, videos on power electronics, so I'm not going to go into it in any more detail now. Because really the point of this video is to talk about how you can get into measurement of these kinds of circuits relatively inexpensively for less than a hundred dollars. Now I've been looking for an oscilloscope that would run less than a hundred dollars that might be a replacement for the analog discovery which as many of you know I have been uh, using for some time as a kind of low-cost uh, oscilloscope. So what is the, the advantage of the hand tech over the analog discovery and what are some of the disadvantages? Well, the advantage is it's a lot cheaper. This is uh, less than $100. The analog discovery, I think, now is pushing $400 on price. Uh, they both have two channels. Because this is a handheld oscilloscope, the ground is floating. Now, understand, the grounds are still tied together, so you have to reference both channels to the same reference point. But you can display two channels with the ground or reference floating re re relative to the uh, earth ground or the green wire on your uh, conventional oscilloscope. Some of the downsides are I don't think this has the software that the analog discovery has, including things like frequency response analysis and uh, spectrum analysis. But if you're looking for a basic oscilloscope, and you can get this with an arbitrary waveform generator built in, uh, a little more expensive, but still quite reasonable price. And you may notice that down here, it has conventional inputs to use it as a digital multimeter, including, uh, as you see, you can measure capacitance and diodes as well as the conventional volts, ohms, and, uh, and current. So I hope this uh, video has been helpful to those who might be looking for something that's a little less expensive than the analog discovery, but gets them into uh, electronics and gives them a measurement capability that, that lets them actually go uh, quite a ways down the road to electronic understanding. Hope you enjoyed the video and will stay tuned for some more, but more importantly, please stay safe and have a nice day.